Hi, it's Anna. I'm a mom of three living in small town, West Virginia, and this is my art channel. So today's video is kind of long. It's the full tutorial for these ghost paintings. Okay, you ready? Let's make a painting. Last year, I ended up making three of these. Um, it uses a ghost swipe technique to make a ghost family. Anyway, I love this. This is a seven by 14 canvas. Today I'm trying the same technique, but on a couple of 10 by 20 inch canvases and then another seven by 14, just cause I know it works well on this size, but I'd love to make um, some bigger ones too. So here's what you need to make it. Um, you need some black paint. I'm using Apple Barrel Black. You need some white paint. This is a varnish bottle that I've put some white house paint in, so that's what I'm using today. I think you can use pretty much any white paint. And then I've got silver, which I'm using Blick Studio Acrylic Metallic Silver. Um, it's a nice light silver. Um, you could do it with just black and white, but I like the you know, the little streak of silver in there. It gives it a little bit more interest. Um, I'm, yeah. Let's, let's start. Oh, here's, so the other tools that you'll need, of course, are paper towels, your paint. So I've mixed my paint, uh, one part paint to two parts flow draw, and then thinned it with water. It's a pretty, it's a pretty thin consistency. It's, well, it's sort of a medium thin. It's not, it's not as thin as like a Dutch pour, um, but it is definitely thinner than a flip cup. So I've got, you know, here's my white. So it flows well, leaves a little, little bit of a puddle or a, a mound, but not much. And same with my silver. Flows well. All right, um, so then I've got a couple of just palette knives that I'm using to help scrape the sides. And I have these little plastic swipe tools that I've made. I just, I have a laminator. So I just took laminator sheets and ran them through by themselves. So it makes these nice flexible plastic pieces that you can wash off and reuse. So I have three different sizes, sort of a small, medium, large depending on what kind of space I have and what sizes of ghost I wanna do. And then also a couple of straws would be handy. You will need them to kind of shape the ghosts by either blowing or sort of vacuuming it up with the straw. All right, let's go ahead and start. I'll start with this one over here. So start by putting a base coat of black on. I'm since I'm doing three at once, it's hard to know exactly <laughs> how much I'm using per canvas. But for these larger canvases, I I think I have about eight ounces of paint of the black paint per canvas, and then about two ounces of white for the larger canvases and I don't know, maybe three quarters of an ounce of silver. It's hard to know exactly how much you'll use. You don't need as much paint per canvas as like for a flip cup or something like that because you don't have to stretch the paint over the edge. You can control where the paint moves. Um, it never hurts to have a little bit of extra paint. Got it covered pretty much all the way down, leaving just a bit of a band here at the bottom. This is where the white and silver will go. Clean 
off my palette knife. I'm just gonna pick it up and tilt it a little bit to make sure I've got it evenly distributed. Make sure it's a nice smooth covering and also to check for lumps. do a quick torch of the paint just to pop those air bubbles don't particularly need air bubbles here okay now the white paint okay so I like to whoa cover the edge here, including the front edge with the white. Whoops. Get that off of there. All right, I'll come around here and touch up my front, front edge. Now I'm just going to pour on a little bit of silver. Big blob there. Okay. And then finish up with just a bit more white. Okay, who's ready to see some ghosts show up? I am. All right, got my edges covered. Let's see how this goes. This is my first time trying it on a larger canvas. Again, I know how it works on the smaller, but let's see it on the bigger. So I've got Small, medium, large. Let's start with a medium. Get a paper towel ready. Oh, wonderful. I didn't know how far up the paint would go, but it traveled very nicely up sort of fading out. And again, we'll change the shape of this in a minute. Okay, so we've got sort of a medium one there. Let's do a hmm. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to adjust my swipe tool here. So I have See, this one's this one's quite small. I wonder if it's too small for this. So I'm going to make myself an even, like a medium small. Okay, so now I've got, you know, just a little bit smaller on the edge here, which I'll do next. Start down at the bottom, that way you get all that lovely detail. All right, so I've got two sort of angling this way. The next one, I'll try not to angle in the same direction. The next one I'll make big. Oops. So there I picked up some of the black paint, so I'll have to add in a little bit of black paint just to kind of fill it in on the top. I'll do that now before I forget. Here. 
There we go. And we'll adjust the shape in a minute. Okay. Um, let's do another sort of medium, one of the larger mediums. Okay, sort of flat on top. Um, all right, now I'll try one of the really little ones. These are cute. <laughs> He's got a little mohawk there. Um, and it looks like the last one is gonna need to be a big one just to sort of fill the space best. The swiping is done. Um, so now we, we have these like ghosts um, and now I use the straw to shape to shape them and, and sort of give them head shapes and um, like arm shapes. So here I'm taking away some of that little squiggle that came up. Because a little squiggle is fun, but a giant squiggle is a bit much. Okay, let me come around and look at it and see how they should be. First of all, I'm going to blow down here where it didn't swipe across the silver as much. Just to kind of fade that out a bit. start making kind of some wiggly wavy ghost shapes and then up here these corners will be kind of arms that are leaning and I'll, I'll blow in to make some separation Do, if you've got, if you're blowing deeply in there, you can add a little bit of black in just to make sure that you're filling that space that you're hollowing out with the straw. And that way it'll stay, it'll stay the way you put it. Okay. That's looking pretty good round out this head. All right, so this guy, we've got a nice little reach. Um, I'll do the same basic kind of arms on this one here, just because he's here in the middle. And So that guy looks good. Um, this guy will just sort of 
make his shape be a little bit more defined. Okay, I think I need a little bit more black over on this side to be able to blow it across the white. All right, this little guy I'm gonna leave as he is. He's got a little sprout of hair and I just think he looks cute. So I'm not gonna try to give him arms. Um, same with this guy, I like his slant. So I'm gonna make the slant a little bit more. And again, add in just a little bit of black. To fill in what you've just blown, blown away. This guy definitely needs to have arms. He's just too square. All right, that looks good. And this guy needs to have arms too. I'm happy with that. We've got nice sort of silver striping. We've got a nice fade. We have good ghost shapes. Just thin out this silver at the bottom. So there is my first little family of ghosts. Hooray. Okay. Just dab a little bit more black paint on your corners, but again, you can touch those up when it's dry. Just save some of that same black color. Um, I'll just grab a popsicle stick and run it under the edges here to knock the paint off. The edges. To try to minimize those drip shapes and keep it from stretching too much more. So that's done. All right, for right now, I'm just going to slide it that way a little bit so that I have some more space to work on my next two. Hey guys, I'm touching up my ghost paintings today. So as you can see, they are dry. They dried really well. So there's that one, the smaller one. Anyway, so now that they're dry, now I can touch up some of the places that I didn't love, just little bits, and then start adding the eyeballs. Um, so the eyeballs, I made this, which is a little like sketch of experimenting with different character just based on the shape of the eyes and 
how big the pupils are. So the first step is painting the eyeballs white. And then the second step is painting the eyeballs with glow-in-the-dark paint. And then the third step is painting the pupils on top. And then it will be finished and ready to varnish. But before I do the eyeballs, I'm just going to touch up um, any edges. The, the corners seem to be fine. They don't need much touching up. But one of the areas that I will be doing is right here in the cracks. It didn't always make a nice point like I like. So I'm going to just use some of this leftover black paint. And this is actually my leftover um, paint that's got the Floetrol and water mixed in, um, which you can use straight paint. I like touching up with paint that has a little bit of Floetrol because then the brush marks are not as obvious. You have to add it in a little bit heavier, but um, it's easier to get the texture less noticeable. I've got a few brushes. I'll start with this one. So here I've just I've made these little points go down deeper, and I'm actually, I don't love this one. I'm going to add a little bit more up here. Also, with the ghosts in particular, if you would like to make any of their sides look sort of more wavy or less wavy, doing it with a brush, that's a great time to do it. here with what I've done with the black. As you can see, those corners are much neater now. So I'm going to be starting with white. Um, uh, because glow-in-the-dark paint is actually, it's like it's a translucent color. It's not solid, so you have to start with a white base if you want the eyes to look white and then also glow in the dark. Also, it helps them to glow more if there's something light behind them. So I'm going to start by making the white. Here's my eyeball shapes. So I'm going to start by doing sort of the circles um, with white. And I may have to come back and do another coat of white depending on how thick it dries. But this is where I, you have to look at them and figure out what are they doing? Okay, so there we have the guy with glasses here, looking up at him. This guy's going to be looking worriedly down at him. This guy's just happy. This guy's looking up suspiciously at this guy, who might be off in his own little world. And this guy is sleepy or grumpy. Here we are. This guy's going to be sort of squinting up at this guy, who's looking down at that guy. This guy is looking up at this guy who's doing the happy squint. This guy's going to be deer in the headlights shocked. And this guy's probably just going to be kind of looking over at him. Alrighty, so we start out with Mr. Worried over here on the side. And this guy leaning over like, whoa, what's your problem? And then this guy 
He's going to be sort of looking down this direction at this guy, whose eyes will be either crossed or sort of split in multiple directions. And then this little guy has glasses. He's going to be looking up, probably at this guy, who's looking down at him, like, hello there, little fella. I'm using this folk art glow-in-the-dark paint because um, I've already painted the whites of the eyes and now I need to make them glow before I add the black pupils. So I'm going to put some in addition. I'm actually going to add a little bit of flow troll just to help um, thin it out just a little bit and make it minimize some of the brush marks. Okay, so I've got my glow-in-the-dark paint, and now I'm just going to paint on the eyeballs. You want a nice thick coat all the way out to each edge so that the eyes look just as good in the dark as they do in the light. It is time for the last step of adding the eyeballs to the ghost painting before I varnish. Um, so I've done a coat of white and then touch up with white and then I've added glow in the dark paint on these eyeballs and now I'm going to be adding the black pupils. So I have my black paint that was left over from doing the project so it already has Floetrol and water uh, mixed in with it. I like doing these eyeballs with um, pre-mixed paint rather than straight acrylic paint uh, just because it flows better. It tends to blend in. You don't get brush marks. My sort of inspiration page that I drew out. That way I can look at what I want to do while I'm doing it. And I know what shape to make the eyeballs and where they should be. Okay, I'm gonna start with this guy over here who's sad. He's sad and he's looking over at this guy. All right, now this guy, he's gonna be my first glasses-wearing ghost. So I've got my little, little brush for doing the glasses edges. We've got Mr. Scared, Mr. Skeptical, Mr. Happy, Cross-Eyed, Little Glasses Guy, and this guy happily looking down at Glasses Guy. Okay, so we have 
Over here, we've got our glasses guy, worried guy, happy, excited kind of guy. This guy looking up at the really tall fellow who's kind of scared or something. And this guy's just sleepy. <laughs> Here's the last set of ghosties. Very fun. All right, well, thanks for watching this process. Um, and I'll show you a video when these are dry. I'll show you a video or a picture or something of the glow-in-the-dark eyeballs and how cool those look. So, here is the finished painting. Well, one of the three anyway. Um, it's all dry and varnished. All the eyes are there. Um, and I wanted to show you how the glow-in-the-dark eyeballs work because those are super fun. So let's turn off the lights. Aren't those amazing? Oh, I love that extra detail because it looks great when it's hanging on somebody's wall, but also when they turn off the lights, it's extra interesting. So that's how you make the ghost families. I would love to hear what you think and be sure to let me know if you end up making one too. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to see more of my videos, be sure to like this video and then subscribe to my channel. Thanks again. See you next time.